All we've got here is a character that can move around and some projectiles that are being thrown at him, um, but there's no collisions between the two. So what we really want to do is get some feedback to the player that their character has been hit. In the script that's attached to our player, I'm going to add this function, and our goal here is to get this function called when we've had a collision between the player and any other projectiles in the scene. And all it's going to do is log out that he's been hit. To do that, we're going to add some components to the player and to the arrow. On the player, we're going to add a rigid body 2D. And make sure gravity scale is turned off because we don't want the rigid body to move our player for us. Then also on the player, we're going to add um, a box collider. You can change the offset from its initial position and the size of this box. So we're going to move this down, make it a little bit wider to encompass the body, a bit longer, something like that, and a circle collider for the head. There's a little tip here, providing the rigid body is on the same object as your script, for the callbacks to the script, you can place your colliders on any child object underneath that. If we drag our arrow into the scene and give that a box collider 2D. Finally, if you just tick this box here for is trigger, this means we're just going to get callbacks from the collision and not expect the Unity physics engine to move the objects for us. Apply. And if we just try that out, you can see we're getting logged to the console every time we're hit by an arrow. Just so we can see the collision happening visually in our game, we'll delete the arrow object that we've collided with. And we can easily access that in the player by seeing what we've collided with and getting the game object for that. If we play that one final time, we can now see arrows disappearing. So that's a quick run through of colliders and callbacks from them. There's a link to the GitHub repo for this tutorial in the description if you'd like to dig into this a little bit further. In the next video in the series, I'll walk you through a simple method of pausing. Thanks for watching.